So today, I want to I wanna help you if you're going through a midlife crisis or you think you're going through. I want to guide you, if you are going through one, to direct you to one that is um, not negative, um, but more, you know, either neutral or even positive. Um, because a midlife crisis is a very uh, powerful biological force, which we'll talk about how that happens. The very powerful force which will overrun anything that comes in its way. You know, that could be like your family or your finances or your friends um, or, or even yourself. Uh, so I want to help you to direct um, your midlife crisis uh, away from something negative into something that's more either neutral or even positive. I'm going to be basing what I'm talking about based on my own experiences and what I went through. So, uh, welcome to my channel where we talk about bikes and Bible verses. Um, so as usual, we're going to have a Bible verse at the end, so please stick around for that. Uh, and today, we're not really talking about bikes, although it's sort of related. So the first point I want to talk about is to identify if you're really having a midlife crisis. And the problem with identifying is the people that are around us because you could you could do something in your in the age 20s or early 30s right no one will care no one no one will say anything but you do the same thing in your late 30s or early 40s and everyone says oh it's a midlife crisis so like people have a bias um, People have like this bias of associating associating things based on like the current context. You buy a car in your 20s, no one cares. You buy one in your 40s, you're like oh midlife crisis. You know, you get a divorce in your early 30s, no one cares. Um, you get one during the age of your 40s, oh you know it's a midlife crisis. So um, the first thing is avoid people like like people just some some people just even mock and make it as a joke and say it as a joke and it's it's not it's not a funny joke you know um, avoid people like that you don't you don't really need people like that in your life so there are a couple of things that actually point out that are very uh, strong indicators uh, of, of a midlife crisis and the first one is if you are in the age of say between I don't know 36 and 40 something early 40s and you have this sudden and overwhelming feeling of just just being bored and, and just wanting a change uh, also other people say that um, you want to change everything about your life now me personally uh, I had that first point I was just this, there was this sudden um, there was this suddenness of just being really bored with everything that I'm doing and um, I didn't have that thing, that feeling of wanting to change myself. I, I didn't really want to change myself. Um, I have heard of other people who, who do want to change themselves, but uh, me personally, I didn't go through that. Um, uh, what, what I, what I did do is, is I wanted to get things back into my life, um, specifically things that I used to do when I was younger. Um, I remember just suddenly just looking up and trying to join a soccer team. Um, you know, I hadn't played soccer for over 10 years and, and suddenly I just wanted to, to, to get back. There was like this urgency um, of wanting to get back into it. And the reason that a midlife crisis happens it's, is it's biological. So your body, as you get older, your body starts sending you signals. And those signals are telling you, like you feel it in your brain, you know, your brain, you, you, you kind of, your brain senses it and feels it, and it kind of sends you signals to say that, you know, you are not at your peak, um, you are starting to decline, you know, physically, uh, you know, your body feels that. And what it tells you is, you know, people are busy, they're busy in their life, working on their career, they're working on their family, and then they start to get these signals. Uh, of their physical body saying, hey, you know, you're, you're actually starting to decline. Uh, you're starting to physically decline. And so your brain says, well, what am I doing wasting my time with all this stuff trying to, 
build a career and you know family and everything that's how your body sees it right and why am I doing wasting my time with all this stuff and I'm not enjoying my life and I'm starting to decline so this mix of signals that happens and says well I'm not gonna I'm starting to decline I'm not gonna have time to do the stuff that I really enjoy uh, maybe that's physical stuff and in essence that's what a midlife crisis is and like I said like it's this feeling that you cannot you can't reason with it you can't talk sense to it um, but I think you can guide the direction of it it's like if you need you know the urgency of needing to go and pee right so you cannot logically reason and think about um, how to stop wanting to pee you need to pee right so uh, what you want to do in a midlife crisis is you you want to guide where you pee you're not going to stop your uh, your urge to want to pee but you want to guide right you don't want to pee on you don't want to you want to guide it in a way that you don't pee on others and you don't pee on yourself um, you go and you find a toilet and you pee there right and you know you get relieved there and essentially that's what we want to do we we don't want we're gonna have this urgency and we don't want to um, we don't want to make it overrun and destroy our family and you don't want to destroy your finances you don't want to you know, destroy uh, your friendships or even yourself you want to guide it in a way that's not negative now I started riding a motorcycle at around the same time that I was having these empty feelings uh, but I always insist that I didn't start riding because of a midlife crisis I really really believe that riding was like it was just a matter of circumstance like it was just the people around me and the things that were happening and although starting to ride a motorcycle really cured even though it wasn't the reason why um it took away it sort of relieved some of those feelings but the other thing is i at the same time um i happened to buy like this car which is a bit like a sports car right fast car and 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 everyone can turn around and say oh it's because i'm going through a midlife crisis which i, I don't believe it was when i went to the dealership to buy the car I, I was actually looking for an SUV and um, and then the, the dealer sort of I guess twisted my arm there was this sporty small sportish car um, which is still a good like family car it was, you know good solid sedan and it was only 4,000 Australian uh, which is about 2,500 American more than the SUV that I wanted to buy and some people were saying oh that you know you're going through a midlife crisis that's why you bought that um, you know you're going and spending all this money and it really ticked me off that you know um, I'm going out to buy a $38,000 car I went and bought one that was 4000 more and people are looking at that extra payment like they don't see the 38000 that I'm already paying but they look at the extra 4000 um, you need to avoid people who think like that and secondly everyone told me that that was a better choice they weren't going through a midlife crisis you know all the dealers and things were like oh Phil I'm glad you got that one that's much better you know even my wife she's like if you'd got that other SUV I, would, I, would, I wouldn't talk to you anymore people's perspective is very is you just sort of a lot of time just people don't know what they're talking about and you should just ignore it um, and just be happy with what you have and enjoy your life so, um, how do you guide your life to, um, if you're having a midlife crisis, uh, how do you guide it to, from something negative to something more neutral, benign, or even positive? Some examples of like a benign, um, neutral one is, um, you know, people have the urge to start watching the TV shows that they used to watch when they were young, when they were kids. Um, I think that's quite benign. That's you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe they start to play the computer games um, that they used to play when they were young, when they were kids, right? It's, it's quite neutral. The other positive side is that you might uh, start to join a sport, um, go back to a sport that you used to play, and you know, as long as you sort of ease into it, 
um, that's something positive. It'll make you more healthy, um, you know, it'll extend your life, it'll help with the changes that your body's going through, balance the hormones and, and just make you feel good. Um, and being part of, make, reminds you what it's like to be part of like a team, a sporting team. It could be, you know, to, to grow your qualification. So there's a lot of uh, either neutral, benign or positive ways that uh, you can where you can um, relieve the urge of the midlife of your midlife crisis uh, in regard to riding a motorcycle whether it's negative or neutral or positive um, that depends on you it could be negative it could be very negative it could be neutral I guess and it could even be positive um, if, if you're riding because you want to be reckless you want to satisfy that reckless urge um, or you or your I guess if you have overconfidence, then that's negative. Um, you know, there's a very high chance of something um, not good happens to you if you have that mentality. Uh, if you're writing because of image, you wanna <clears throat> you wanna have that image of you know, uh, you know you're not writing because you like bikes. You're writing because of how people see you. And as long as that doesn't involve being reckless and you're still sort of careful and stuff, then I guess that's neutral. Um, positive is when you actually enjoy the machine, when you actually enjoy, enjoy bikes or you enjoy being around the people who ride, making new friends, um, just seeing life in a different perspective. Um, that's a lot of things that I actually gained um, when I started riding. Uh, and finally, um, you can actually avoid having a midlife crisis. And a midlife crisis um, a severity of a midlife crisis depends on what, how you've lived your life prior, um, what seeds did you sow into your life, and um, it's a bit like, it's a bit like death. So death doesn't care about your status, how much money you have, um, you know, it doesn't care, it doesn't care about anything about your life, right? Um, so everyone has to die at one stage. Um, and a midlife crisis is kind of the same thing. It doesn't care if you had, if you were rich, or whatever status you are. What it cares about is how much you will put into life before your midlife crisis. You're going to be rich and have everything and comfortable, and you didn't really need to work, um, and you just sort of live comfortably your whole life. You're going to have a pretty hard midlife crisis. But if you gave your life 100%, if you gave your life your best. You took, you know, those risks, those, um, you know, you didn't always stay on the comfort zone. Um, then your midlife crisis might be positive, or you know, you might even avoid one. So anyway, I just want to end here now with the Bible verse, uh, and that is from, uh, and that is from Titus chapter two, verse two to three. It says, "All the men are to be temperate, dignified, sensible, and sound in faith." Sound in love and in perseverance. Older women likewise are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossipers or enslaved by too much wine, and teaching what is good. So what I've actually learned from getting older, and a lot of people, part of midlife crisis to them is they don't want to get older. Um, you know, and <clears throat> younger people, like in their maybe late 20s, they think about it and they say they don't want to get older, they like being young. But there's a lot of advantages in being older. And when you get to that other side, you realize that actually it's better now when you're older than when you were younger. Um, there's a lot of advantages, there's a lot of life that you can enjoy more. There's a lot of differences, you know. Um, you see things that you never saw when you were younger, uh, you know. As I said, I joined the soccer team, um, and I don't now I don't do as much playing. I still play, but what I also do um, is is you know I referee and I guide and I train and coach young people. And um, sometimes you see that respect, that respect when I'm out refereeing on the soccer field trying to keep people safe. You see that respect of those younger guys um, in, in their treatment. Um, and, and just the, you know, 
if, if they have any sense, and a lot of people are sensible, a lot of young people are sensible, um, they have that sort of um, respect that you're older and you know more, and you're, you're wiser, and they try to learn things off you. Um, that's a side that I didn't realise, I didn't see that one coming. Um, so it's, there's a lot of advantages. So anyway, that's all I've got. I hope um, I'll be able to help you. Uh, if you are going through a midlife crisis, help understand what's going on um, and just to, I guess, look after yourself. So also, uh, if you like uh, my, if you like my video, please give it a like. Um, and uh, and if you like my content in general, hit subscribe. Uh, make a comment that helps um, that helps my channel. Those things help my channel to um, you know, to, to grow. Uh, and if you are riding a motorcycle, uh, take it easy and ride safe.